Ladies and gentlemen, the news just keeps getting better for Donald Trump when it comes to the polls. We've got Atlas Intel, the most accurate pollster over the 2020 cycle, also really good in the 2022 midterms. They've come out and they've got Donald Trump up three with the national popular vote. And I see something like this, the most accurate. And and remember, we're talking about the national popular vote in 2020. They were number one in terms of margin of error. They, They were basically perfect. Remember how good Gallup is with their party ID. I'm starting to wonder, should I be predicting Donald Trump to win the popular vote by two and a half points? I'm not even kidding. I mean, because that's what it's what they're saying. I mean, it's all aligning and you've even got the liberal pollsters now. It's taken a while, but they're now starting to say, oh, it's basically 50-50 in terms of the popular vote. Obviously, this is an amazing, amazing poll for Donald Trump. You also do have the battleground states, uh, the full field polls. Pennsylvania, Trump sitting up three, which would be a crazy victory. Uh, Michigan, Trump almost up three. Obviously, if those two things happened, it would be very surprising if Harris won Wisconsin. Uh, Borderline impossible if Trump is taking Pennsylvania at a margin of around three and uh, Michigan at 2.8 with how close the Rust Belt is. It would likely be a Wisconsin by about three as well. Um, You also do have Georgia plus one and a half. There's great early voting uh, news out of Georgia. Of course, with early voting, it can change day to day. But right now, the early vote looks good out of Georgia. Arizona, Trump up by about half a point. Nevada is basically even Trump with a very slight lead. And then Harris leading North Carolina, which by the way, it is a total meltdown with the early vote numbers in North Carolina and how great they are for Republicans. And I'm someone that says, let's calm down on the early voting. I've, I've cautioned people and said, but but the, the numbers are so good, it's overwhelming. Now liberals are coming out and they're saying, listen, I mean, Republicans are going to win North Carolina. There's somebody that was like, admitted it. There was a Democrat and then they privated their account. Um, they were like, look, and they were like, oh, Harris is going to win all these swing states, but North Carolina is looking bad. So they were even that crazy liberal where they're like, Harris is still going to win, but North Carolina looks bad. So they're admitting North Carolina is going to be very hard for Harris to win off of these early vote numbers. And it's just the environment in general. You go back to 2020 and 2016, they've got Harris up by 0.7 in Wisconsin and North Carolina, but that is a popular vote, three point advantage for Donald Trump. And this is Atlas Intel, who has been very, very consistent over the last three months. They had Trump up by two back in July In September, it was about basically three because 50.9% to 48%. And then it's at 50.8 to 48.1. So it is basically a three-point advantage, 2.7, 2.8, give or take. But I mean, in terms of the popular vote, we're starting to see some things align where all the huge, I mean, like I said, it was going to be closer no matter what, just because of the shifts in New York, the shifts in Illinois, the shifts in Florida, where it's going to be, instead of a three-point victory for Trump in Florida, it's probably going to be a 10 or 11-point victory. And there's a lot of liberals that are going to be, they're going to be shell-shocked when they see the margin in Florida because they're liberals, you know, the, the, the real liberals, they don't think they're going to win Florida, but they think it's like a, a five or six-point loss. They're going to be crushed when they see the margin in Florida. It's it's going to be shocking to them. And I, I don't know why. I mean, you look at what happened in 2022. Even if you want to say, well, they gave up on those races in the midterms. I mean, you lose by 20 points. I mean, what, what you know, you think Trump's going to perform 15 points worse than DeSantis? That's crap. It's not going to happen. They're not polling Florida correctly. But the margins in some of these states are shifting to the point where it's like the popular vote now. It's I'm not saying Trump's the favorite in terms of the popular vote. We're getting close, though. When you've got the most accurate pollster who's had three straight polls over a three-month span, all basically saying the exact same thing, and you have the Gallup Party ID, which is extremely accurate in determining within one point who wins the popular vote and the margin of the popular vote, and it's sitting right now, Republicans plus two to plus three. We'll see what the final numbers are, but that's the average. And along with this, you're starting to think, well, it's probably about a Trump possible two-point victory in terms of the the popular vote. And obviously, if that happens, it's going to be a, a very easy electoral college victory for Trump. Um, he could, I mean, the, the math is a little bit different because when people look at this and they say, well, if Trump wins the popular, by, popular vote by two points, he's going to get like 350 electoral votes. That's just not how it works because Trump's going to make up ground in a lot of the high-populated liberal states, but he's not going to be able to win them. Like, obviously, if he won New York, then you're talking about the Electoral College going crazy and Trump getting 350 Electoral votes. He's not going to swing it like that. Most of these swing states, unfortunately, haven't swung to where they're really safe Republican. Like, ideally, you know, you'd love to see Pennsylvania be like Ohio. I mean, look at what happened with Ohio. Ohio's a Rust Belt state. Nobody talks about it being in the Rust Belt because it's not a swing state. So everyone just talks about the other three. But if you're a Republican, ideally, you get Pennsylvania where you win by five or six, Wisconsin, you win by four or five, Michigan, you win by two or three consistently, and you take all those states, and then you can afford to lose a state like like, like uh, Texas, but although you don't want that to happen, but I'm just saying, 
um, in a situation like that. But those states are still very close, unfortunately. And that's why we're talking about this with the seven swing states. Um, but either way, right now, I do think these numbers are just amazing. North Carolina Republicans won the second day of North Carolina early voting. Day one was bad for Democrats and Republicans came out even stronger day two. And there was something, I, I guess it's, I guess I couldn't, can't really find, oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, there was a liberal that admitted that North Carolina was a total train wreck in terms of the early voting for the Dems and they, they hid their account. A Democrat on North Carolina basically saying they're getting crushed in early voting. It is just a few days. Who, who knows? That maybe they'll make it up. But um, with the environment, it would be very surprising. I, I mean, listen, you're talking about both North Carolina and Georgia right now looking very positive for Trump. You've already got Arizona. It's, it's not in the bag, but Trump's got a very good chance to win Arizona as well. It's a total death blow. I mean, you need one state after that. And if you've got, I mean, I mean, now we're starting to look at Pennsylvania with the help of Elon Musk and all the rallies there. Pennsylvania's starting to get out of hand, possibly. I mean, you've got an Atlas Intel Trump up by three in Pennsylvania, up by around three in Michigan with all of those positive polls that we've seen where Trump is upright. You know what? Let's actually see this for a second. You got to tell me is this if this is added to the aggregate or not, where I have to take a look at this. Um, I want to see if the, they did add these polls or not. Let me take a look at Michigan. All right, well, they haven't added, they're going to add Atlas into this. Trump's going to probably go up to like 1.4, 1.5 in Michigan. Pennsylvania, if Atlas has him up 3.3, yeah, Trump's going to go up to about one in uh, in Pennsylvania. So these polls are only going to help Trump. Uh, and even the ones he's down in, it's only by two points. So I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Maybe the Wisconsin one might bring it back to even. But in general, the, the, Trump is expanding his lead in a lot of these states. I mean, this is this is very, very good news. And it's not just that. Once you get the uh, the Trump-Harris popular vote three-point lead in here, um, they really should have the, the, the party ID. They don't do that, though, because technically it's not a popular vote poll, even though it is. It's a great indicator from Gallup. But once you get that in here, this is probably going to bring it under a point, maybe like 0.9, because that's a Trump plus three. Maybe it brings it to like 1.0. Um which is good news for Trump. And then you get some of these like 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 this Marist, which is a total propaganda poll that oversampled Dems by seven. Once it gets knocked off, uh, you're seeing a lot of these polls coming down and getting closer. And you might even see Trump with a very, very slight lead uh, once we get more updates on this or even like down by 0.3, 0.4 or something like that. Because remember, you take a look at 2020, the comparison there, uh, they overestimated Biden by almost three full points. To be fair though, uh, with Hillary, it was a lot closer. I think it was only about a point they overestimated her. But yeah, it was 1.1. So that's not bad. Um, but again, I mean, listen, when you look at where Trump is right now, it's in an amazing spot. And this is before the updated Atlas Intel with Trump plus three. Once that gets in here and once you knock off this crap Marist poll, um, you, you're going to look at a about a 0 0.7, 0 0.6 advantage for Harris, about a half point, which is just horrible. I mean, and that's with no error either. Imagine if there was no error you win the pop if you're a Democrat and you win the popular vote by 0.5, even with the shifts we're gonna see. And by shifts, I mean states like New York are getting closer, which is what Democrats are gonna argue. And to be honest, they are correct. And that's what I always say is you know, New York's gonna get closer, Illinois is gonna get closer, Trump's gonna make up ground in the popular vote, but it's not gonna equate to more electoral votes. But it still is good because it means the country's shifting to the right. But but even if it is like a 0.5, like like let's say Harris wins the popular vote by one or 0.5. Trump's going to win the electoral college because you're, it's not, they're not going to make up that much because they're still going to run up crazy high numbers. The Democrats are in California where you win California by three or 4 million alone. Um, and, and that's even with California possibly shifting to the right a little bit as well by about seven or eight points. I would expect with Biden winning it by 27, possibly a 21 or a 20 point victory with Trump, Trump having that massive rally. And not just that, it's just all the major states that have a horrible crime like California with LA and San Francisco with Chicago with New York City, I mean, all of these states are sh shifting to the right, some more than others, New York more than than Illinois and California, but also in New Jersey shifting to the right as well. So we're seeing a major shift right now within the country, and it's crazy considering how polarizing Trump is. It's still happening. It doesn't matter. And Trump, even though he is polarizing, he gets people out to vote, and, and that's going to be another thing that helps. And that's why you're starting to see even shifts right now when you look at the betting you're seeing even shifts in the House races and possibly Republicans uh, winning the House after they were only 35, 40 percent, uh, you know, chance of winning. Now they're up to uh, an even higher chance. You take a look at the popular vote. You know, this Atlas Intel poll, I expect to have an, uh, possibly a, an effect when it comes to this. You've seen, I mean, Trump was around 26 percent. Now he's at around 30. 
Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this if this if Trump just got up to around 40 percent here in terms of popular vote. I would say maybe even a little bit higher. Now, what they'll say is, well, if you look at real clear politics and you look at some of these polls, you know, but even the Emerson poll, which is well respected by liberals, even Emerson's got her up by point three. So, I mean, like, like, like there's just nothing. I mean, you've got these CBS polls that have her up by two, but. Um, there's a few other ones. I, th- when you look at like the real accurate stuff, like the party ID and Atlas Intel and how accurate they were in 2020, it was just one cycle. We're not saying, oh my God. I mean, the party ID though, that was like five or six cycles. That's very hard for them to cope about. Um, but even Atlas, who was a very accurate in 2020, 2022, if they're coming out, they're saying Trump's up by three and he's been up by three for the past, past three months. He's probably up by around three or maybe a little bit less, maybe two. Um, so maybe we have to start thinking about Trump with seriously winning the popular, like serious, like, and maybe it's not like a, Oh, he wins the popular by, by, by point three. Maybe it's like a 1.7 to two point popular vote win for Donald Trump now. Um, so, I mean, these are crazy numbers. I mean, it's just like, cause the thing is they were like, well, the Atlas poll, you know, it's not going to be great, but no, I mean, plus three is a really good poll. And especially the past three polls we've gotten from Atlas all aligning with the plus three, they've been very consistent on that. So this is just a great update. And I would certainly expect, I mean, you could take a look at the overall forecast right here. You've got Donald Trump still up by around 20 points. Really no change. Um, I wonder if they would, uh, you've got Georgia 65, North Carolina 66, Arizona at seven. Arizona's up to 70. So that's the first time I've seen Arizona at 70 since I can really remember, since I've been really tracking this full, you know, full go the past few months. So Arizona's now 70. Arizona 70, Georgia, that's what I'm talking about. Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, all above 65 right now. Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, all above 69. Pennsylvania is still at 57. Although that might be, we might get get a new influx of people investing money on Pennsylvania, thinking that Trump's going to win there uh, with this new poll that the Atlas Intel that has Trump up by three there. Wisconsin, 56. Michigan, 55. Nevada, 50 50. It's very, very good numbers. And these numbers are not going to get worse with this poll update. They're going to get better. These are, this is before these people really start make, making decisions based off of this. They're going to get even better. And um, this looks like a, a great situation for Donald Trump right now. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.